How do I know that my church doesn't have God? If you know of a church that doesn't have a prayer meeting, then they don't have God. If you know a church that doesn't have deliverance service, they don't have God. If you know a church that doesn't lay hand and pray for the sick, they don't have God. If you know a church that have war, they don't have God. If you have a church that they leave, they take and they marriage each other children, take each other wife, they don't have God. And if it's happening in your family, they don't have God either. We need God. And God is going to do it. I'm not saying I'm standing as a perfect one. But all I pray that God, I need you in my marriage. Now that I'm being known on television. I need you in my marriage. I, I, you know, I used to say, me and my wife, we will never stop. We will never separate. But I stopped saying that garbage. I start praying, Lord, unless you build this house, we're building in vain. I stop building my marriage and I'm asking God to build. Now, am I speaking to somebody? Come on, I'm going to talk to you this morning here. You got to stop saying, I, I can't and I will and it will not happen to me because that's what I used to do. But after I see what the devil is trying to do with all those ministers out there, Pastor Roger, I fast and make sure once a week fasting goes directly for me and my wife. I don't care what anybody said. I will pray because God, no devil ain't gonna take control here because you gotta help me here. Because how can I, uh, how can I lead if first I can't follow you? You see, this is, I'm gonna tell you, God wants to get rid of the horses in the church. And I'm not talking about this church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Because what? There's a difference between a horse and there's a difference between a sheep. What horses does, they want to lead, and sheep always follow. So this is what God is saying. You're running, I have suffered so much consequences because I want to be a horse. So what God is saying, there was a time that God says, you're running away with the vision and leave the provision. That's why you're going to suffer. And God said, I don't want you to be a horse, I want you to be a sheep. Come on, touch somebody and say, become a sheep, follow God. So what I was doing, you know what? I was going ahead of God. God says, do that. And I run away. God says, no, 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 no. You see, there goes. You want to leave me. I wish somebody said, Father, I repent. I'm not going to be a horse anymore. I want to be a sheep. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. What a horse did. You tell the horse, yellow. <laughs> well, you tell a sheep to what? So I realized that there was a time when my life was going as a horse. And I was one or two, I was a sheep. I think it was going to become a horse. I want to take the ministry where God is not ready to take with me. And God says, when you're ready, horse, when you break your feet, your hoof, then you will come back. I'll heal you and then I'll teach you how to be a sheep. I'll teach you how to be calm. I'll teach you how to fall. I want to teach you something this morning. Change your life to follow Christ. If you know God, you follow Him, He will direct your path. The step of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. Did I make mistakes? Yes, I did. Because I want a hoof. I want to run. The apostle came to Jesus and tell him about the things they had been doing and teaching. Jesus took them by the ship apart to that desert place to rest for a while. But yet, what happened? People began to follow him because they were really did. In Mark chapter 6 and verses 38, if you can put that on the board for me. This is very powerful for every one of you. Jesus was moved by compassion. 34, 34. The Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion towards them. Because they were a sheep not having a shepherd. Did you see that? Listen, it is important. It is important. I want to start teaching this church something very powerful. And uh, a and, and prophet has touched on it. Listen, please don't you ever make a move unless you know you have a shepherd. Or there's a wolf that is waiting to destroy you. I wish somebody take that prayer. I want to teach you a second principle. Principle number one, a shepherd for the sheep. Principle number two, evil men will always fear godly men. 
I will share a testimony to you. To you. you know why I start appreciating people go and talk about me? Because a prominent businessman of this community came to me and gave his life to Jesus Christ. Not because he heard good things about me. He heard a whole lot of bad things. And that's why he came. He said, you got to be one good thing about this man. Because all that bad, but yet this church is full. Something good. He came in and the Lord said, leave him to Christ. And God, I love him to Christ. That's God. So sometimes, if somebody didn't go say something negative to him, he would have never known who I am. He would have never tried to go visit my website. He would have never had an interest. But what the devil meant for, I wish somebody got a message. God turned it for good. If there's some stuff that is evil that is happening in your life, God will turn it around for good. I want you to touch somebody and say, God will turn it around for good.